Hey guys, welcome back to another Combo HLO Guy Stuff meal video. What I've got today are some beautiful whole red snappers that we're going to be grilling up and some beautiful delicious salmon that we're going to be filleting and also grilling. I've done these before on Guy Stuff as smoked and I'm going to be doing these in just single serving grilled fillets so you can see the difference there. Uh, really easy to do, minimal prep. Uh, you can choose to marinate your fish if you wish. I'm not going to because I'm going to be doing these uh, with the juices wrapped in foil so I don't have a lot sticking to the grill. That's the biggest problem with grilling fish. Not so much with the smoking because it's low and slow, but when you're grilling, the fish sticking to the crates is your number one enemy. So it requires some pretty good lubrication on the grill itself and usually some oil on the fish. Or you can do what I'm going to show you, and that's basically tenting it uh, a lot like I do the last part of my ribs using the one, two, three method. So it helps kind of steam the fish in addition to getting that great grill flavor. And again, if you don't have a charcoal grill, you can certainly do this on a gas grill. And if you don't want to fire up your grill, you can do this in your broiler. Just lose out on a little bit of the flavor, but you know what? It's going to be delicious any of those ways that you do it. As a side, I have chosen this Uncle Ben's Ready Rice, which is a convenient microwave packet. You put it in just like popcorn. You just tear a little vent, and literally in 90 seconds, it is awesome rice. Okay, I, I'm a big fan of these. They're not cheap. They're two bucks a packet. You do get two good servings per packet, or if you're a really big guy, one. Uh, I'll admit, I used to be one. But anyway... They have a lot of different flavors, and they all taste great. They're not all good for you. They have a couple that are actually really healthy. This is the most healthy, just the original white rice, surprisingly. I thought the wild or the brown would be better, but it's actually not. Uh, the sodium is what you really need to watch in these. And this, uh, it's, it's got no fat, obviously, no sugar. This only has 10 milligrams of sodium. So it's not even registering, it's registering at 0%, but there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit on here. So virtually nothing to worry about with this, which is rare. A lot of the white rices you buy, they're processed, they're enhanced, they're bleached. They have a lot of crap in them, but this is one of the better ones for you. Now, like I said, they're not cheap. If you eat a lot of rice, what I would suggest you do is go get a bulk sack. They sell them in like 50-pound bags at Costco and Sam's very inexpensively. This literally becomes, I don't know, like four cents. I mean, it's just ridiculous how cheap it is in bulk. But I don't need it that much. I'm going to eat it for the next few days as I finish up this fish. But then I probably won't have it for another couple months. So these packets are fine. Two bucks, big deal. Um, the brown was very close. I prefer the white over the brown. And the brown actually had 5%. So it was, I mean, not a lot more. But compared to the other flavors, the other flavors, some were up to 70% of your daily recommended sodium in one packet, you know, compared to this, which is nothing. So that's why I'm choosing this. You can choose whatever you want. If you want a salsa, you want some veggies, you want a salad, whatever, that's cool. But I just love fish and rice. To do this, very simply, we're going to chop up our green onion and chop up our cilantro. We are going to stuff that along with some lemon slices inside our snapper. And that's really all there is to it. I've got this lemon and pepper from McCormick. Now this does have salt in it. Um, you really need salt when you're grilling fish. There's just no way around it. But we're going to be gentle. We're not going to add any more salt than what's in this. And yes, it is the number one ingredient. But... Like I said, you just can't get around it. So it's going to be about portion control and just taking it easy on this. Uh, we are going to coat the inside and the outside of the salmon. And basically, we're going to let it steam itself. We're going to put just some pads of butter, not like a half stick or anything like that. And the butter is just going to help steam it. It's going to drain off. We're not going to be eating a ton of the butter, so don't go crazy on that. I know a lot of you like to make comments like, oh, you're doing it wrong, that's not healthy, you should eat this, you should do it that way. You know, that's fine. You do your thing any way you want, man. This is what I'm doing. I'm just sharing. So, whatever. And, uh, and we're just going to cut up the onions. Or, not onions, lemons. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just 
do a little bit of prep on the veggies, slice up the lemons, and wash the fish. And, uh, oh, you know what, before I do that, I should go out and start my grill. Uh, you've seen it before, I'm just going to put the charcoal, I'm going to do a full stack in the chimney, and it's going to be off to one side, so I'm going to be able to grill these directly over the heat and have this indirect. So I'm going to go do that, because that takes about a half an hour to start the coals. And then I'm going to go and chop up my veggies, and we'll get cooking. All right, got the veggies chopped. This is the whole bunch of the green onion and about half the bunch of cilantro. Equal amounts there. I tell you, I love cilantro. I mean, it's just one of those vegetables that's like a candy to me. This and kale. Oh, kale in soups, just divine. Now, there are some vegetables that I will never even remotely like, like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, spinach. Oh, that stuff makes me vomit. But some veggies, absolutely love them. Just the way I am. All right, well, let's prep the fish. Really easy to do. We'll start with the salmon first. Get rid of the ice pack here. It's important to keep your fish very cold until you're absolutely ready to use it. If you're buying it right from the store and you're just going to take it home and literally start cooking, you don't need the ice. But I got this about an hour ago, I guess. So I needed the ice. And of course, store it in your refrigerator. So with these guys, what I like to do is when I smoke them, I like them very thick, at least an inch thick at the largest section, because that gives you the really flaky, substantial layered meat. And for that, I usually go down to a specialty fish market that gets it in from Scotland. And I love Scottish salmon. It's buttery, it's thick, it's oily, it has that fishy taste. It's the closest thing to Alaskan that I've had. Alaskan is absolutely top-notch, but uber expensive. So this stuff, uh, it's usually imported from Chile, sometimes Canada, um, but this is farm-raised, and I have absolutely no problem with farm-raised. I usually like it better than the wild-caught because it has, at least here in my stores, a much better texture. But for this thinner stuff, you know, like I said, I bought all they had left. They were sold out. This is only about three quarters of an inch at the thickest point, and then this stuff, you know, tapers down to even an eighth of an inch here at the edges. So not really ideal, in my opinion, for smoking, but perfect for grilling. So we're just going to cut this up into steaks, into single-serving fillets. And uh, first, oh, now I've got to wash my hands again, but first I'm going to simply season it. And that is just with the lemon and pepper seasoning. There's enough salt in there where I don't need to add anything else. Before I, do, uh, before I did the HLO project, I would typically do it with just coarse sea salt and pepper, which tastes awesome, but I was very liberal with the salt. So I'm just cutting back on that a little bit and adding the flavors in. Before it was just salt and pepper, literally. No lemon, no zest, no sugars, nothing. But uh, we can make up for the lack of pure salt with a little bit of seasoning flavors. So let me wash my hand. Well, you know what, I'm gonna unbutton these snapper while my hands are dirty. I've got a pan here that I'm gonna transfer everything out to the grill in. Now it doesn't get any fresher than this unless you have a pole. One fish. And they are slippery. Ouch, and spiny. Two fish. All right, get rid of this ice pack. And for these guys, even simpler, we, we are not gonna cut them up. What we're going to do is stuff them. Uh, what I've got to do first is cut it open and gut it and wash it out. And let me get rid of the salmon first because I need a little bit of room to do this. And This is the part where you really want to be doing it over a sink because it's going to get a little messy. But I'll see what I can do. Maybe I'll just use this pan to show you guys. Stand by. Alright, starting off with our salmon here. Real simple. We're going to do a relatively light rub. You just want a nice, even coat. And 
nothing true dra too dramatic here. Just want to make sure it's all even. I can see how much salt there is in here, and it's really not that much. I would say it's probably about a quarter of the mix. Not that big of a deal. A lot of lemon color in here, a good amount of pepper. All right, so that looks good. Now we're simply going to slice it up into single serving sizes. I've got a cutting board underneath here. Very important when cutting through the salmon because the skin is pretty thick and rubbery and you absolutely positively need a good knife because you will sit there and you will hack at this skin trying to get through it if you don't have a good knife. Trust me. And you never want to cut directly on your glass cooktop surface either because that will absolutely ruin your knife. But when you get the combo right, it goes through like butter. That's all it takes. I'm a huge advocate of using good knives. This set, you would think it's expensive. It's Farberware. It's not like mind-blowing or anything, but it's very good. Excellent construction, good balance, full tang. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. I got the full set with the block for 47 bucks at Walmart. You cannot touch that. I've, I've bought far worse knives for three to four times as much in the past. So as much as I hate shopping at Walmart, sometimes you simply can't beat the deals. And of course cut these to whatever portion size you like. This is about what I prefer. I love salmon. It is truly my favorite fish overall can do so many different things with it. Smoking it is just, oh, that's my favorite way of doing it because I enjoy it cold after it's been smoked. When it's flaky and just falls apart and is oily, I love fish oil and caviar and roe and oh, my wife can't stand it. She can't even stand looking at the skin. If I cook this for her, I have to take the skin off for her. She won't even look at it. So there's our salmon. And you can see that, let me hold this up here in a second. You can see that these aren't really that thick. You know, about as thick as my thumb. But when I'm smoking them, I like them about to there. It makes a huge, huge difference. It's also why I like the farm rays, because the farm rays is typically thicker than the fresh caught. All right. Well, I'll set this aside and bring back the other pan and I'll show you guys how to gut and prep whole fish, at least the way I'm going to do it today. Now for our whole fish here, if you're actually catching them fresh, you need to open them, gut them, and clean them yourself. If you're buying them from a store, you will sometimes find them pre-done and this one has been done as a small opening here. And what I'm going to do is simply open this up a bit so we can more easily stuff it. that gives us some room and basically we are just going to help this thing steam itself from the inside I don't know if the camera can pick it up but I mean there's just pure meat just like a chicken in there this is all solid meat from this point back and then you have two side fillets right here right up to about the gills and there's no need to trim it up or anything we're not going to be eating the head we will be eating right up until this point at, when it's done, you'll see that the skin just comes right off and you just simply take out the big chunks of meat. It's really delicious. So all we have to do now is make our stuffing. Remember Billy Bass? Hey baby, what's shaking? Eat more chicken. So this is going to be an easy prep. I just want some lemon slices here. Should have taken that sticker off. Yeah, get off. Now what I want to do 
just squeeze out some juice into this veggie mix. Careful of the seeds. I want to use about one whole lemon worth of juice in here. You can keep that because we're going to use that too. Make sure you get out any seeds you accidentally put in there. Just give this a quick little mix and we're going to stuff half into each fish. Oh, you know what? Before that, I want to season the inside. Now it's kind of tough with these guys because it's a little small, but I can get some in there. Let me rinse off my hands. Stand by. All right. Now we want to get some seasoning inside. Come here, you slippery devil. Just kind of work it down as best you can. It's really not going to go too far, but it is what it is. This guy's a little more open. All right. And just give it a real light coat on the outside and pat it in. This is more for aroma as it steams. Obviously, we're not eating the skin, but the salt does help. It'll help it pull away. All right, now we can stuff the inside with half of our veggie mix per fish. And just shove it in here. This is just for flavor and again for steam. one. Ow! Man, these guys are sharp. Whew. Thought that one drew blood. And now the rest of it here. Beautiful, beautiful. Smells so good with that lemon and cilantro. Pour the rest in. Alright. Now for the rest of our lemons, we're just going to slice them up. We're going to stick a couple slices inside and the rest is going to lay on top as it steams. Let me rinse my hands once more. Before I stuff the lemons in there, I want to put a quarter stick of butter in each fish. And again, this is not all going to be eaten. This is going to help it steam, and it's just going to, going to baste it while it's tented. So you don't have to worry about this too much. Kind of break it up into little chunks here so it'll melt faster. There we go. Shove it in. Careful of the spines. Looking good. Shove it way down in there. So we're going to put the lemons right at the end. Do this guy here. OK. 
Okay. There we go. Get some more of those greens in there. All right, now for the lemons. Let's cut the ends off. Cut them in half. Shove it in. Give it a little squeeze, got it set in there, beautiful. Shove it in. Get in there. There we go. And a little squeeze. Nice. All right. Now, I've got some aluminum foil. Let me rinse my hands one more time, and we'll get these puppies all set for the grill. All right, so we're just gonna put them in the middle of our wrap here. Put our lemon slices in, give them a quick squeeze. And these are just to help it steam. That's why I said save these ends, because they're good. simply wrap it up tight. What I like to do is kind of roll it, roll in the ends first. Be careful of any spines that are sticking out so you don't poke through the foil. And then bring the ends together. So you've got a seam and then fold it. Makes for a really nice tight pack. See? Just that kink on top completely seals it in there. That's what we want. So it'll steam on the grill. We'll do the other one. Make sure you get in any of the lemon juice and the cilantro here. All good stuff. All right, wrap this one up. Bam. Good to go. All right, let's go out to the grill. All right, got the coals on. This is just one chimney of hot coals. I had a few unburnt, and I just dumped the new stuff right on top. That's fine. It's been sitting here heating up this grate for about 10 minutes. You want your grill very hot for doing this. Um, again, if you're not tenting it in foil, you are going to liberally need to lubricate your grill and your fish, or it will stick. The salmon, I don't need to worry about because we're only doing it skinned down. It is going to be direct on the grill, but it's skinned down and we're not flipping it. So uh, basically the skin is probably going to stick to the grill and that's fine. The, the meat will come right up. So um, I'm doing this all over direct heat. I'm pretty much out of room to do everything in one go indirect. So that's not a big deal. We're just going to do stuff at a different time. The snapper is going to take somewhere around 20 minutes. I'm going to check it at the end. We may have to put it back on for a few more minutes, but I think 20 minutes is going to hit it absolutely perfectly. And then the salmon is only going to take maybe eight or nine at the most. So we're going to put that on halfway through. And all we need to do now is just put it on. So I'm going to grab the snapper. This just goes on. I'm going to just 
put it out of the way here to make room for the salmon later and put the lid on the grill. Keep track of my time here in about 10 minutes I'm going to come back probably 10 about 12 minutes probably I'll put the salmon on. Now I did forget to mention one thing this snapper was small enough where I didn't have to do anything special to the outside but if it was any thicker if you had any more difference between the thick parts and the thin parts what you want to do is slice into the outside a bit just to let that heat into the fish. It's not as important when you tent because you're steaming and you're cooking more evenly but if you're grilling directly that's absolutely necessary but not necessary for what I'm showing you today. So I'll be back in just over 10 minutes and we'll put on the salmon. 10 minutes is up. Now we are going to flip our snapper. Just carefully flip it over. It's hot of course. And we're going to put on our salmon. What you want to do is put the thinnest part of the salmon against the outside just to help with the cook time. Go lid back on, and we'll come back and check these in about eight minutes. All right, we should be just about set. Let me show you what you want to look for here. Now, when you're smoking, you're going to have a completely different top color to the fish. When you're grilling, you're smoke, you're cooking hot and fast. So the bottom side should be starting to get crispy. You want to see all the juices starting to bubble out. You want to see the top just start to get brown. You're going to see whatever seasonings you put on start to brown. Check on the thick piece. Make sure that it's completely opaque all the way through. This needs some more time. It's still slightly translucent right in the center. We want the inside to look like this very opaque pink white. And it's a little too red in the center yet. So we're going to give it a few more minutes, and we'll check it again. All right, now we're looking good. Now we can go ahead and pull it off. Out of room here. Try to get the skins off if you can. If not, not a big deal. They'll clean off later. Beautiful. <laughs> that one kind of exploded. You can see how the meat looks. That's what you want. Nice and opaque all the way through. Still juicy, absolutely tender, falls apart and flaky. That is perfection. I know my fish. All right, give that to the birds. Oop, give that one to me. And there we go. Uh, the snapper, I'm going to, oh, I guess I'll put it right on top. I got room. Just want to be careful of the juices, so flip it over before you put it in your pan. It's getting kind of heavy. Now I'll, I'll unwrap this inside for you. All right. 
time to take a look at the snapper. Got lots of lemon and butter coming out here. Ooh, hot, hot steam. Carefully unwrap it. And that steam's no joke. So let it escape. Oh, it smells good. Mmm. Now if we did it right, should be moist, tender, ready to just pull apart with a fork. Yeah, that's nice. See how that skin just comes right off? Just have to touch it. I'm not putting any pressure on it. Perfect. Just slide it right off. There's your meat. Flakes right up. Done perfectly. Mmm. Delicious. Lemony flavor. It's got that zest to it. Absolutely perfectly done. Moist, flaky. All right. Well, I'm going to stick my rice in there. I already know my salmon's perfect. Look at that. Mmm. That's even better. I love salmon. So there you go. There's how to grill whole snapper or just about any fish. Like I said, if you get a thicker one, give it some slices, especially if you're going to put it directly on the grill instead of tinting it. And that's how you do salmon. And uh, if you want a really healthy rice solution, there you go. Not cheap, but worth it to me. Very convenient. See you guys next time.